Hi, welcome everyone. Welcome to the live stream. We have Ajax, Papimento, and Thomas. Welcome, Thomas. Good to have Hello. you. Hello. How are you? I'm fine. You? Good, good. Uh, season approaching the end. Um, a very, very difficult season, let's put it that way. But we have so much to talk about today, to be honest. A lot of things happening towards the end of the season in terms of recruitment as well and uh, rumors. Um, before we start, quickly, I just want to uh, touch upon a couple of things. I hope people had an opportunity to watch the uh, extra talk that we had this week, part one with Sven Mislintat. Uh, very insightful. I really enjoyed doing that talk with, uh, with Ben. Um, so I hope you guys enjoyed that and stay tuned for part two next week. Um, other things that we have to touch upon, congratulations to Michael Reisiger to becoming the young Orion coach. Uh, I hope he really does well, and maybe that will be a start for him to become a good coach later in his career. And the third thing, quickly, uh, tomorrow, most uh, anticipated by some, not everybody, but the away kit. So um, looking forward to that. Uh, we already know how the away kit will look like, but still... Uh, it looks like it will be presented tomorrow officially. Welcome to everybody that's joining the live stream. Uh, we don't. We saw the comments already. I will come towards that in a bit. But first, welcome, guys. Ajax, Papimento, Thomas. Thomas, let me start with you. What's on your mind recently? A lot of things happening. What's on your mind recently in terms of uh, what's going on with Ajax, uh, in terms of news, rumors, etc.? Okay, so um, hello, everyone. Uh, and I believe that Ajax this season has been like like my shirt, pretty dark, pretty dark. Uh, so not not too not too much uh, fun stuff, uh, not too much joy. And yeah, let's let's kick it off with a uh, with a sad uh, topic, to be honest, because uh, a certain number twenty wants to leave us. Uh, he won't extend his contract. Uh, I'm talking uh, Mo Kudus, obviously, and. Um, uh, some people might be uh, curious or might have doubts uh, if, uh, if if it is, if it is to be understood that he wants to leave. And when it come, if you ask me, uh, it's I, I can't see him learn too much more here. I can see him having uh, like not having too much sentiment towards Ajax, towards Ajax, to be honest, because he's been mistreated uh, like mm, yeah benched way too many times, played out of his position, and so on and so on. And he still carried on. Uh, and uh, most of the time uh, uh, played very, very well, to say the least. Last couple of games, not that great, but still, uh, overall this season, possibly our best outfield player. Uh, I guess one can argue that uh, that, is the point, uh, that is the case here. And uh, no extension. I can't see him uh, extending because... Why would he, to be honest? Uh, he's not a youngster anymore. Uh, he's a player who, who's shown himself uh, during the World Cup. I'm sure there are plenty of clubs who are interested in him. Um, and yeah, um, I, I feel this is the time for him. Uh, I would love him to stay uh, as an Ajax fan. Uh, I feel like Ajax would benefit a lot uh, from uh, still having him, but I just don't see a point for him um, to stay more. So... Let's hope we get a hefty fee for him. Uh, and yeah, let's say goodbye. And uh, I will always, I don't know how about you guys, but I will always have a uh, feeling of like that his stay was a bit underwhelming considering what he can do and how he's been used and uh, how fit or rather unfit uh, for a number of reasons uh, he stayed. Yeah, so it's going to be a little underwhelming, yeah? a, little, a little disappointment to be honest. And possibly... Um, Moko, this is the, the biggest bad thing uh, about uh, Ten Hag's uh, stay with us. I guess he mistreated him and he misused him as, and so on. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to miss Kudus, but I, I can see no reason for him to stay, to be honest. Like, there's no point. What, what else can he learn here? Uh, and uh, he's ready. He's, he's, he's ready, so he should leave and uh, he will leave. And I hope you get a lot of money from him and uh, I wish him all the best. It's a joy to watch him. Uh, so I hope he joins a nice club uh, where he plays a lot. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, Papi, do you share the same uh, sentiment as Thomas in terms of Kudus? Do you think it's understandable that he's leaving already? He doesn't want to extend, basically, because I approached him last month, yeah, in April, to ask for um, whether he wants to extend his contract and he said, he said basically no. Um, what's your feeling about that? Well, 
Look, Ajax doesn't have a choice, right? He doesn't want to do a contract extension, so um, it's it's no choice from our side to keep him. It must be coming from him that he wants to leave. And for me, if I look at his personal development over the years at Ajax, this is the first season where I'm okay. He's a starter at Ajax. He's making uh, the right moves. And the only point I disagree with, with with Thomas is that he cannot learn much at Ajax. I think he can still learn a lot. I think he has the technical capabilities of a world-class player, but I think it sometimes lacks in his maybe vision or understanding his surroundings more or, you know, he, he downplays the game a lot. So when he starts seeing the options much faster, he will become a, much, a better player. And I think that comes with games. I think he's, if, if it was up to me, I would give him the advice to stay because this is his first season playing. He had a bad injury at Ajax. He came back from that. He's now reaping the rewards of playing week in, week out. Maybe he will go now to a big team and he will sit on the bench. There goes your development. So, um, yeah, I, I see him as a 10. I see him, I see a team in Ajax that's still unbalanced and needs a lot of work. He could be one of those leaders in that team that, that carries Ajax to a higher level, you know. So uh, that would be my personal opinion. Yeah, a lot of people commenting also on the, on the Kudu situation, a little bit of mixed uh, opinions. It's, it's a hard one, it's a tough one. Uh, some people are saying he's ready. Some people are saying, no, he should stay like you, Papimento. Uh, Ajax, I'm throwing this one also at you. Uh, Mike sending you as well his, uh, his regards. Uh, where do you stand in terms of the Kudus uh, uh, debate? Uh, quite simple for me. Uh, I love Kudus. We all know I'm a, I'm a fan of Kudus, this play, um, the player he is and the potential he has. But I'm really done with players um, wanting to move on. I understand it. It's your right. You have a contract and you want to yeah, approach something else, you know, you want to do something else. You want to see um, what your limit is and maybe earn a little bit more. But I'm done with the players that already think that they are, are ready for like the big thing, you know, the big leagues. Because uh, Kudus is one of the best players in our team. He wasn't played that much with uh, uh, by Erik ten Hag, and he had a lot of injuries. This season is his first whole season that he played like the majority of the games in one season without absence, you know. And he's not been dominant every game, especially the last weeks. He's not been that dominant as under Schroeder uh, or in the beginning of Heitinga. So if he thinks he's ready, good for him. He can move on because his contract is for a certain amount of time, you know. If he doesn't want to extend, it's his fair right to do so. But as a fan, I'm done with all these players thinking that they're already ready for like a big team in the big league. You saw with, with, with uh, Gravenberg, they had a great plan for him, according to himself uh, at Bayern München. He doesn't play. He was one of our best players. Uh, although I like Kudus very much and I think he has a lot of potential, but he has to learn a lot still also. Transitional defense, not keeping the ball too long with him, uh, learning to know when he's offside and isn't offside. He isn't done at Ajax yet, but if he thinks he's done, fair play to him, but good riddance then. I'm not going to be sad about it. We need to rebuild next season. We need new players, and I do not want to players at our team that do not want to be at our team anymore. Then you can better sell them, use the money, get other players in that are motivated and still want to fight and, uh, and, and you know, um, learn things at our club and be a better player. And I do not want to be stuck with players that do not have the heart to play for Ajax anymore and do want to do the next thing, you know. Then better to move on. Uh, that's my two, two cents, man. Yeah, Thomas, you want to react? You grabbed your uh, microphone very, well, very harsh like this. <laughs> no, no, I'm just always uh, attacking minded. Uh, but in all seriousness, um, yeah, I, I, I get you what, what you're saying, guys. But I don't think uh, the things that uh, that Kudus lacks, like for for example, you know, holding the the offside line, for example, uh, which is yeah, his like his uh, biggest con. Uh, I don't think he, he has much to learn more uh, at Ajax, which he cannot uh, learn uh, at other club at, at a uh, higher level. Uh, I'm not saying he's ready for you know I don't know Manchester City for example, but but I I don't know Dortmund transfer for example would make perfect sense I guess uh, for for that level of transition he's ready already. Look, you guys know I'm always trying to be the devil's advocate here, so I'll try I'll try it again now. But just just another reasoning right from Kudu's side. He has been injured, so it's not a blame on Ajax. It's his own thing, and it's unlucky, I know. Um, but 
this was, like Papimento said, his first full season, and he played a lot. In the Champions League, let's be honest, it wasn't a great success, but he was a standout in those group, group stage uh, games, right? Not only that, he hasn't been playing in his natural position. And um, you can say, like, okay, but you should be happy playing at a position as a starting eleven, whether it's a striker, whether it's a right winger, etc. cetera. To, to a certain extent, I do agree with that. But if a player really feels like his natural position is not given to him to develop as a player, it makes sense for him to think like, you know what? Um, maybe he is not ready. I agree. I don't think he's ready for a bigger team because he has deficiencies in his game still. He really has to learn. I agree with Ajax on that as well. But on the other hand, maybe he thinks he cannot develop if he doesn't play on his natural position, if he doesn't take the role on the midfield again. And maybe he wants to try somewhere else, which makes sense, uh, right? If you think about uh, it. I will I will say this, though, about Kudus. I, I do think with his capabilities, he should leave when he's really leading the team. Like, uh, I'm talking about assists, goals, etc. cetera. Um, we had the same discussion, I think, about Anthony, that he wasn't ready yet to go to a Premier League. The, the step would be too high. He, he wasn't decisive enough uh, for us in, in the Ajax team to make that step. And I feel the same way with Kudus. It's maybe too early. But as Thomas said, if it's going to the Bundesliga, maybe that's a natural step for him and that would be a logical choice. Sure, why not? Uh, but going to a Premier League club, I think that's still too far away from him. Yeah, so you're saying he has to take uh, a step not too far from what he's at right now, from Ajax, basically. And that's the way Frankie, right? Yeah, Just but... A little, little slower. Let's and also, honest, yeah, yeah. You, 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 you mentioned Gravenberg. Uh, let's remember Frankie. Uh, Frankie was ready to leave, right? I, I guess we all agree. Yeah. Uh, and uh, his first season wasn't like superb. He was a disappointment at Barcelona for 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 Catalan fans. Uh, and now, now he's one of their best players. So. Yeah, the players need to adjust there as well. I mean, in the new club. So I wouldn't uh, uh, write Gravenberg uh, off uh, after one bad season. Uh, yeah, it's always... No, I, I, I think the issue with Gravenberg is he was still young and he made yeah, a move yeah, sure. and, the plan, and the plan was better at Bayern and he sat an entire season on the bench. In, mm. in that case, I'm like, yeah, you made a bad choice. Um, you, you could have stayed at Ajax. You could have played a whole entire season again. Uh, all that experience, you could have been a leader in the team, um, but but you made the choice to go and, and sit on the bench, and that cost him his place in uh, the, uh, yeah. the World Cup. And also, uh, so it had big consequences also for him. Yeah, but also when coming back to Kudus, you have to remember. I, I, I guess we all agree that he has the potential to be like a superstar, or whatever, uh, or at least that's his ambition. Ambitious players are willing to take risks, right? And we have to remember that Kudus is not a 19-year-old 19, 19 uh, anymore. I don't, I, I'm not saying he's a mature player and uh, nearing uh, to his uh, like uh, uh, retirement, but still, it, it, he's not a youngster anymore. He, I guess he feels like, yeah, I'm at the age, I have to, I have to take the next step. When he was uh, uh, moving to Ajax from, uh, from Denmark, uh, I, I don't believe he thought he would be uh, still at Ajax uh, by now. I know the circumstances were, were what they were, but still, uh, the time is ticking. <laughs> uh, yeah, I agree. I agree. But, I agree. But, I agree. But let's be, honest. Yeah. Let's be honest here. You know, uh, we can say a lot about the, the topic, but it's plain simple. Um, it's all about the money. He wants to move on, have a bigger contract, and go to another club. You cannot tell me it has to do with positions. That's bullshit. Because you have the right, if you have the right mentality that you want to develop as a player, you can find those objectives also on other positions to be a better player. For example, learning to be not offside all the time. Doesn't matter if you're the 10, the striker, or a right winger. Learn to pass the ball faster and make uh, better decisions on which position you play. You can have a lot of objectives also on other positions to work on in a season and become a better player. So the, the whole argument about which position is best, he's not playing at his natural position, that's bullshit for me. As a player, you should strive to be the best version of yourself and try to have goals for yourself in a season. If it's a right winger position, a striker position or a 10 position, it doesn't matter. For me, it's plain simple. He wants more money. He wants to move on, go to a bigger league. And I'm telling you this... He probably going to be a bench player if he goes to a top four Premier League team 
you know, I do not see him becoming uh, immediately a first team player there. He's not ready. All right, but do you think he has the he has the potential to be definitely, okay. definitely. But if he's a smart guy, he would stay a little bit longer at Ajax, play one maybe two more seasons as a star, as one of the carrying players in the team. Then you're ready to 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 fill out that role. But money talks, you know. And I and I understand he comes he comes from like a um, he comes from Ghana, you know. Probably I do not know for sure, but I do not think. Um, he's very rich, you know. He, he 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 tried to make a better life for himself or maybe his family. So I do understand the argument for making more money. I'm not saying it's stupid, but like for a sportive way, you know, the way you want to play during your career, it's better to stay at Ajax, develop, become a better player, a more complete player, and then make the move. But it's up to him, you know. Money talks. So this is the argument why he wants to leave, in my opinion. There's yeah. one more thing. There's yeah, one more thing, guys. Just quickly, yeah. Sorry, Thomas. Just we have to get around this conversation because there's so many things we have to talk about. Okay, but, but one more thing. Just uh, yeah, I, will, uh, I do as well. Just quickly. Yeah. Can I go first? Is that okay? Yeah. yeah. You're the um, host, man. Go ahead. <laughs> Ajax. I just want to say um, it's it probably money has to do with it, right? Uh, it's very hard to know, but I would not go all in on that argument. And the reason for this being twofold. First of all, and again, I'm not defending him. Uh, I'm just coming up with other arguments. When he came from Denmark, he had options to go to bigger leagues. He could have earned more money, but he chose to go to Ajax for a specific purpose. So, so the money argument, um, maybe now it's more valid. It's, it, it can be, but it's not his primary objective because otherwise he wouldn't come to Ajax at, at yeah, the start. I, I agree with that. I, I agree. Oh, sorry, go the ahead. Second point, just quickly on the second point as well. Um, something we're not we're not taking into account as well. Look, it has been a disastrous season. Yes, I, I mean even disastrous. We can still go over PSV, but we will touch upon that later. Um, but having said that, we had Schroeder, uh, and now we had Heitinga, and we don't know who the coach is going to be next season. So as a player, and even Heitinga said that last month in an interview, that the players want to know what's happening. They want to have clarity. And a player is not going to risk another season like Kudus, not going to risk another season. He hasn't been a starter for the last few years. And now he has been playing, but not on his natural position. Maybe if he stays, next year he'll be bench again. It's a non, the second one is a non-argument for me because you will never know how a new coach and a new team will play you or bench you. Look at Gravenberg. So that is the case in every team. If we have a new coach or you go to a new team that has a plan with you, you go play under a new coach, you have to prove yourself. You never know how it unfolds. So as a player, you just have to cope with that each and every season. It's part of being a professional football player. I don't believe you can say it's a non-argument because yeah, it, it is, is an argument. You don't know what to expect. You don't know who's yeah, going to be. Yeah, but you never know what to expect as a player. You no, never know you, what to expect. You, you have to be mentally you. ready and fight for your place and be ready every and each time to fight for that first 11 spot. So that, that doesn't change. The but first one... That first, that first one is for me, I understand your reasoning, but I believe firmly that Kudus as a youngster, the money he got offered for a bigger league uh, compared to maybe the money Ajax offered wasn't maybe that big, um, big yeah, difference, you know? But now as a more an established player at Ajax that has proven himself, especially this season and maybe partly the seasons before, you are more in the picture now. You're not coming from Denmark. You're coming from Ajax, one of the greatest academies in the world, you know. So you will be offered more money by the bigger teams. And the gap between what Ajax offered to him as a youngster compared to maybe a, a little bit of a better league is now way bigger than back then. So, yes, he made a sensible choice in the beginning of his career. But he would be smart continuing making sensible choices also now. He is still young. The best for his career is staying at Ajax. The best for his money is going abroad. Okay, and and what if he just just the last thing I want to say the the Grafenberg um, comparison is a little bit different. If you go to Bayern Munich, that's basically you're you're arriving at the station. When you're at Ajax, you're not arriving at the station. You're you're basically developing yourself to arrive at the bigger league at the bigger club. So in that sense, but but but, but, but Juan, in all honesty, I do name, what name, me, name me one player, name me one player, and I'm talking about established players that moved on 
besides Frankie and besides Matthijs de Ligt, name one other player that has made it in another league. Sieg failed because he wasn't played. Donny van der Beek had a lot of injuries. Lissandro. He failed. Lissandro. Okay, maybe Lisandro Martinez. That's a, that's a good one, but but he was already maybe more of a finished product than that Kudus is. So no, absolutely, all absolutely. other players, Masraoui, Gravenberg, Donny van der Beek, Sieg, it goes on and goes on and goes on. They uh, already actually, have I, a hard I time. See, I don't see Masraoui as a failure at Bayern, by the way. He's playing now. No, I, I understand. I understand chances, what you're so. saying, Papi, but he hasn't played a lot this season. So you cannot say he had a successful okay. season minutes wise. But they had the switch of coaches. I do think they had the switch of coaches. Don't forget. I do think that we talk a lot about the perspective from the Ajax point of view, and I understand that because that's the way we play. But I also see Kudus being able to shine in a different system, formation, <laughs> a little bit more awesome. counter attack kind of team, a little bit more directness. Than the play that they play with Ajax. So it's not all a bad choice. I just think just because this is his first season as a starter, I think he could have learned much more just by staying one more season. Yeah, you okay, can say uh, starter, but he had the full season. That's basically what you're saying. Okay, I have one yeah. more thing to say about it. To wrap it up. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. What if he's, uh, we had a shit season, right? We need to rebuild. What if he simply doesn't believe in the, in the whole project? I mean... Yeah. He That's might not, he might be wrong he might be right but it is a reasonable uh, point of view right yeah. you know of it's course. a lot of speculation from our of side course. I just think yeah, that so, it's money, yeah, but it's we're, money we're, we're considering what, what what might be driving him and, and, and I this believe is a reasonable that as a, thing as a professional me. player yeah. you should be ready to 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 do your utmost in any kind of circumstance you have a certain quality and yes which position you are played in is is very important because you cannot shine on each position the same way but the mentality and the drive as a professional player that wants to develop should be always there so in my opinion and maybe it's a little bit old fashioned you should be ready as a player and it's a non argument who the coach will be which team you're at you're always beginning at a zero point at the beginning of the season when the preseason is there you have to prove yourself all over again Okay, maybe a certain established player that is there at the club for like three or four years already that has like a guaranteed starting spot. But everybody has to prove themselves every single time. So that's no different than another club. I, I, I feel I like, I don't know, man. I, it's kind of simplistic for me. Uh, how many times have we heard from players that were bought by a coach and then they lose their job and with the next coach, they're out already or uh, next season they're sold already because the coach doesn't see it. It's also the chemistry between coach and, and player. And yeah. um, that chemistry, we didn't see at all with Den Haag. So now that he's having that with Heitinga, you would think that he would consider a little bit more of staying because he's getting much more chances than he, he used to get. All right. I, I think, guys, we covered basically all angles on the yeah, Kudus case. Uh, yeah, we have to move on. Uh, Ajax, uh, let me give you um, the same question that I had for Thomas. Uh, something else in Kudus. So, any other recent news, recent developments you want to uh, touch upon? Yeah, I think it's nice that uh, a lot of uh, youth products, um, you know, got in the news lately that they are probably going to extend their contracts. Uh, uh, for example, Foss, uh, Setford, uh, Misehui. Uh, you know, a lot of uh, great products in the youth academy that actually sign a new contract or are about to sign a new contract. Uh, same with, uh, of course, Amarillo. Uh, that signed a new contract recently. Uh, I think that is a good thing. I do not know if it's Sven doing this, but if he is doing that, that's a proper job. Uh, so uh, those things um, I like because under the helm of Overmars, uh, a lot of times there were certain uh, youth products that contract-wise weren't always in the best situation for Ajax standpoint. So I like that it is now being tackled early before they uh, make their minutes and debut in uh, in the first teams, you know, like like really uh, a lot of minutes. And maybe Roy is right. And maybe it's Huntlar because he was the one being responsible for the youth, right? Uh, yeah. When Sven got in. But I yeah. think, um, yeah, they probably talk about it uh, with each other. Like this is the things we need to tackle and maybe he's just executing it. I don't know. But I like, the, uh, I like that news a lot. Yeah, I think everybody does. Uh, that's very good. Um, yeah, Roy I'm is just... very, very happy with Huntelaar, apparently. Um, doing an amazing job with the youth. Sat down with a lot of players, so that's good. Uh, go ahead, Thomas. Yeah, uh, I want to add a little skepticism here, because this is just a one case of uh, doing something right. It's a good thing that it's happening, but let's do not uh, get overjoyed. Let's, let's wait until this happens more often, right? 
uh, it's a very comforting thing to to think that uh, this is Miss Lintat's uh, influence uh, or whatever. Yeah, but just let's let's wait. But yeah, sure, it's great that it's happening. Uh, love it. So let, let me let me hear this straight. It's great, but let's be a little bit negative still because yeah. yes, you know? yes, yes, yeah, yes. Let's do that. Let's, let's be cautious. Let's, let's be cautious. Let's be cautious. Let's be cautious. Uh, Especially, I, I, I think Thomas. I, on, uh, just one moment, Poppy. I think Thomas has been infected with the with, with the virus this season, the Ajax virus. Yeah, yeah, yeah probably. So. Uh, go ahead, uh, Poppy. Sorry, man. Yeah, no. I, I mean, I'm very happy uh, that they um, signed the contract extension, or or they will, and a very good job that you know we're seeing things moving from now on uh, since uh, Sven started and and everything is getting clear in the board and etc. I just want to, uh, the only thing I was thinking about is, are they signing because Huntelaar and them, they had such a great uh, talk? Or is it because they're seeing their chances because so many players are, are missing and they have the opportunity to fight their way into the first team? Because that was also a problem uh, back in the day when the team was sorted out, uh, the youth weren't getting a lot of chances. So I think that also the youth are, are seeing their chances now and are willing to go and fight for it because they see the opportunity. Probably, yes. Or maybe we're giving them more money than before. <laughs> or maybe, yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, maybe. That's something I don't know about, but it's possible. Um, maybe, again. Um, but we also have, like, just to drop this name also, we have also another case happening. Um, Regeer is going the other way, probably. He's mm -hmm. going to Twente. How do you guys feel about that? It's fine. I mean, uh, if we have a, uh, I wasn't too impressed with him. I mean, I didn't feel like uh, uh, he's he's not worthy to wear the shirt or whatever. Uh, but but I'm fine with him leaving, especially considering we have a like a reasonable uh, buyback cost. Uh, so it's not a lost cost. And uh, if we are selling a player and not loaning him out, then uh, uh, Twente has all the reason to uh, to invest the playing time in him. So. I, I see nothing negative about this. All right. Puppy, yeah, I'm going to buy that club. Hold on. Hold on, Puppy. Just quickly. Sorry, what did you say? I love the buyback clause. Mm -hmm. so yeah, it's a, a, yeah, and apparently the buyback clause uh, is four million. So that's those are the rumors. So that that's pretty good. Uh, if he develops, we can always get him back. Uh, Roy reacting to you, Puppy. Um, it's both. So talking about why the youth are signing more now. Uh, it's the fact that there are more opportunities, but also the fact that they're having a sit down with Huntelaar. So, so uh, somebody to talk to, not Van der Sar. I don't know if Van der Sar sat down with him, even. They know, he know, never did. I, I think that was a problem. The communication, right? Yeah, yeah. The communication within the organization. True. Uh, Papi, um, something that you want to touch upon, maybe? Yeah, uh, I mean, I was very surprised when I heard Kelvin DeLong as a head scout. Um, I heard things about him. He has been six years, I think, with Manchester City. Uh, he's Dutch from origin, played at Telstar, ex-footballer, has his coaching papers. Uh, but he has been in the game. He has a great network. You know, six years, he has a database of technical players that we might want, that City maybe looked at, but... You know, it, it, it didn't work out for them because they're looking for a different type, but they're in the same profile of what Ajax uh, would want. So I think it's just a very good signing to have somebody so experienced and really working in the current age to um, to lead this division and um, and make some move for us because, you know, we're so develop, um, dependent on our youth. So this is just uh, very positive and made me very happy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like I started the you know the the stream basically, the recruitment is taken care of right now, so that's a good sign, um, and we know also that uh, Sven officially started last week, so things are happening already. We're 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 um, uh, putting ourselves in a situation that we are ready for next season, right? Because we don't know where we're going to end after Sunday, but in either case, in any case, basically, we have to be ready for uh, for next season on time. Um, because also players make like Kudus, but maybe even Timber, Edson, we know they're leaving as well. So that's good. Um, yeah, you guys touch upon a lot of things. I want to actually go, somebody asked this question. Uh, maybe we can touch upon that uh, first. Uh, Keith is asking, hi guys, how confident are, 
are you all that we can finish second this Sunday? Uh, and I just want to say one more thing because we have, of course, the PSG fan that always comes and always drops uh, a banter at us. Um, so Slot is staying at Feyenoord. So you're not becoming champions next season, but at least we won't be in the conference league. So, of course, he's very confident, even after Van Nistelrooy got sacked or he left. I'm sorry. I believe he said he and we are not going uh, coming to become champions next season. So also PSV. Ah, that's why. Okay. All right. Thank you, Ajay. So, uh, towards Sunday, guys, what's the feeling? What's the gut feeling right now? No feeling. No me. feelings whatsoever. All right. All right. Uh, what do you guys think? Can we, can we, I mean, let me go to Mr. Positive here. He has been seeing in recent weeks, there's always a chance. This league is not that impressive. We can still get something out of it despite everything that we're going through. So, Ajax, I'm giving it to you. You know, I've been ridiculed a lot last week no, no. by you guys. But no, in, the in theory, no, hold on. In theory, I can still have the last laugh because if PSV lose against Asset and we win against Twente, we're in that second place spot, you know? So, uh, I'm not saying we're going to make it, but I think it's still a great chance. Asset still has a lot to fight for. There's a lot of rough weather going on at, uh, at PSV. The coach left. Uh, he resigned. So, um, yeah, it's, it's simple as that. Asset needs to secure the win. If Ajax bottles it and loses to Twente, it's the only way for them to go to the third place. And this is all I hoped for, that that last match would mean something and uh, PSV could not just gift the win to, you know, AZ to, to border Ajax a bit, to pile up the pressure. They need to fight for it, both teams. And away at AZ Stadium, you know, it's, it's difficult. I'm not seeing uh, PSV cruising there, especially with AZ having something on the line to play for. Because it's different, you know, uh, Conference League again or maybe Europa League. They want to fight for their last chance also. So, yeah, I think it will be a 2-0 for Asset and a 3-1 for Ajax because Twente has nothing to play for anymore. They cannot drop down a place. They cannot go up a place. And maybe already in their minds, they are going to maybe rotate some players for the playoffs. It's a valid argument, I think. So uh, it's actually in Ajax's favor to play against a team that doesn't have anything to play for anymore. And the other teams, including Ajax, but also PSV and Asset, still have a fighting chance for their, their places. So it's a lot more on the line. Do you guys feel? Do you guys feel like with Van Nistelrooy leaving, is that a good thing for the squad going into the next game against AZ, or is it a bad thing for them? So better for us. Where Doesn't do matter think? that much, if you ask me. Sorry. Uh, it's just one person leaving. To be honest, uh, they still have their whole management, uh, and uh, actually, you know, when Schroeder left, uh, we played fine. So why wouldn't the PSV play fine? Uh, sorry for that. <laughs> sorry for that. But uh, you, you said that uh, the league be, the league's been very, uh, very weak this season. Uh, Ajax is one of the main reasons behind that, uh, to be honest. Uh, and um, I won't go into too much analysis. Uh, I just I have the gut feeling that uh, you know every every uh, every time we got a a tiny little bit uh, of a glimpse of a hope, we always always wasted it. And uh, yeah. Uh, the chance hold right on, now is, on, is very on. slim. Just it's very slim to, to, to reach the Champions League. I, I, I guess we'll finish third. I must I say, we'll Thomas, I must say, I love the positivity you bring to this, uh, this team, man. You, you just <laughs> took it away from me. I just wanted to say, like, what's happening with you, man? I've never seen you this negative on the show before. Uh, well, you, you've seen the season, right? Uh, what so one, what, what one else season, can I add? What, what else season, can I add? So one season takes your Ajax soul away, just like that? Who told you that's taken away permanently? I'm just okay. in a you know lower moment moment. I believe that uh, uh, we're going to to bounce back. Just just not maybe not uh, not Sunday. You know, for some reason I'm still here. I'm wearing the shirt. Uh, I'm not uh, you know uh, deciding not to watch the games or whatever. Yeah, I'm I'm yeah I'm bleeding my eyes, but I'm watching it still. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. Papi, what's your what's your point uh, of view on the? Uh... For Nistroy leaving, is that a good thing for us or not so good thing for us going into the next I, game? I, I don't think it will have any effect, to be honest. Um, you know, it's a one game. Uh, every team is going to go 100% to, to win it. And, um, you know, PSV, I, I compare them a little with, with a German team. They can score in the 90th minute with the Luc de Jong. 
you know, getting the draw, even if they're behind. So it's that kind of team. And that's why I usually don't like watching them. But um, that's why I think Ajax will win. But I didn't, just don't see PSV losing. But, but so hold on, Poppy. Let, let, let me stay let, third. Let me play a little bit of devil's advocate here. Weren't, hey, you, weren't, you, weren't you the one that said like uh, an experienced coach can make a world of difference compared to somebody that's really fresh? So let me get this straight, you know. Ruud van Nistelrooy is just an inexperienced coach, but the one taking over, Fred Rutte, he's very experienced and he will be at the helm of, of, of the team uh, coming match. And now you're saying that won't make any difference? Uh, did I get that right? Or In a positive meaning for us. I, I don't think he, this coach needs to motivate these players for this game because if that's the case, they're not professional athletes. So uh, it's, it's going for Champions League or Europa League. And uh, I think everybody knows what they have to do on Sunday. So uh, it, there's no motivation needed from the coach or else there's really something seriously wrong in that group. Yeah, look, I just want to add, I just want to, add to this whole conversation about Sunday. I just hope, um, and I know... Everybody's a professional. Everybody wants to win games. But there is a scenario if we go up, you know, in the first half and in the break, Asset knows that we're already like 2-0 up or 3-1 or whatever. Maybe they will just not give it all anymore in the second half. And PC only needs one point. That's That that would be shameless FC for you. So, yeah. Possibility we... there. <laughs> all right. Um, uh, everything's possible. Yeah. I'm, I'm just... Yeah, I'm just having this season. <laughs> so, yeah, so you wait, you guys so are saying it's, That's you it. You guys are saying it's possible that we bottle it, but it's also possible that we not bottle it. Is that what you guys are saying? No, yeah. I said we will win against Twente, but I just don't see Azet winning from PSV. Okay, uh, I, I'm seeing every outcome uh, coming up, but if I have to pick one, uh, we're staying third. Yeah, so not, okay. it's not that negative. <laughs> yeah. So uh, I agree with what Gary is saying here. Um, it, it is it is going to be a nice Sunday, right? It's going to be thrilling and keeping the scores yeah, and being stressed about us not scoring. You know, Broby should should take the first chance, like score immediately. You know, exactly. Um, so I really I really think we will be cruising uh, this Sunday. I got this feeling that things will be clicking and maybe Twente not playing their full team. That could be a possibility also. I got this feeling that we will be a few goals up, maybe already at halftime. And, we, and okay. we have the best left side of Europe, so... Exactly. <laughs> no, not anymore, because Bergwijn yeah. is playing as a number 10. Oh, he's playing 10, of course. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right. All right. Um, it ruined it. Yeah. Guys, I'm reading all the comments. Thank you for all the comments. And I'm definitely reading everything. So uh, if you guys have questions, please uh, send it to us. We will tackle those at the end of the stream. But now... To the main course, Heitinga, guys. Um, look, I don't know if you guys had a chance to uh, see the interview after the Utrecht game, but it was a very peculiar interview in which he got the question again, how your future looked like. And he was a little bit, of course, saying, like, we don't know yet, but ask me this question next week with a smile. Now, my question to you is, there's not a lot of, like... Um, I think Roy said that there are some journalists saying that Ajax is looking for other coaches. But if you look at the rumors, there's not a lot of rumors going on right now. And yeah. if you're looking for a coach, this takes a long time usually. And we've, we have, might have heard something already. So with all these things, you know, put together, are you guys, where do you guys stand? Is it like still 50-50? Or are you guys like, mm, I don't know, I think Hatha is staying? Or are you guys like, no, no, I think... We're definitely looking for another coach. Let me go with Papi first. Yeah, I think Heitinga is staying. The, the smile, the smirk he gave during that interview when he said, wait a week. It, it looked like he knew more. Uh, so, um, and he didn't look sad. So I think he's the head coach. And um, yeah, you know, it's not my favorite option, but he is a child of the club. He is an Ajax legend. Um, I'm not going to be depressed about it. I just think this job is too big for him right now. And I'm just crossing my fingers that next season will be okay. If he's the coach. If he's the coach. But your feeling, your feeling tells you basically or you're thinking he's, he's going to stay. Yeah, I do think so. All right, Thomas? Um, it's basically the same. Uh, I have, I'm like, 
eighty percent percent certain that he's going to stay uh, for the next season. I don't like uh, the fact that the whole child of the club thing is being brought up so much. I mean, I have the same feelings for Haiti. Huh? Do not get me wrong, but uh, the uh, the sole fact that somebody's uh, it, it's not that important. I mean, we're Ajax for for fuck's sake, so. I guess quality should go first, and uh, uh, hiding has is not there yet. Uh, so, yeah, it's a nice, nice bonus if if someone's a part of the club's culture or whatever. Uh, but uh, but anyways, regardless, the question is uh, whether or not I think hiding how will stay. I think he will stay, and yeah. I'm not over the moon uh, regarding that. But <laughs> okay, it is what it is. Do you get topics next time that he make? He will be positive. Like, uh, I will consult. Say, I will consult know. before uh, next time because this is not going the right direction. No joke. Um, Thomas can say whatever he wants. It's a talking point at least, right? <laughs> Ajax, um, do you agree with Puppy with Thomas, or do you see uh, it differently? No, man, it's 50 50. And um, let's be honest, when Sven uh, got interviewed, he said Heidi um, was in pole position. Uh, now I hear rumors that um, they are looking for another coach. At least he is exploring the options. I've heard that in the media. Um, so maybe only a second place for Heidi can secure um, his, his role next season a little bit more. But I'm not feeling that confident that they already made a decision. I do think that um, it's logical that you do not hear any names that we just touched upon earlier when you asked the question, you know, you do not hear any rumors about other coaches. It's, it's, it's logical. We're still fighting for that second place. You do not want to create any more havoc within a team or within the organization that is already there. So if there are rumors and if there are names, they will come up after the season's done. But for Heitinga, if he secures that second place spot, he's done well then. Doesn't matter how shitty the rest of the uh, uh, teams were the, in, in the league, including Ajax. He was in fifth, I believe, or in fourth with eight points behind the number one. Yeah, yeah, if he yeah. secures that second place spot, he has done well. And you cannot say anything about it. So that will make his case, in my opinion. If he secures that second place spot, it may be difficult for them to surpass him as the next manager for next season. Because the guy did well, statistically. Second place, did Champions he? League. Yes. It doesn't matter how he got it, he has it. Yeah, but statistically, you're looking at the second place. That's yeah. fine. What about the fact that we haven't won against a big team in the air division? Yeah, but uh, one can argue about this. Schroeder had a preseason. Schroeder had a say in what players he wanted to get in. Heidinga well, inherit, inherited a squad that hadn't won for seven matches. Morale was down. He didn't have any say in which players he wanted to get in. He didn't have a preseason to prepare with him. He just had to salvage whatever he could with this team. I'm not saying I want Heitinga to stay. I'm just stating the facts. He won his first seven or maybe eight games. Yes, he didn't want any big, big games. Maybe the semifinal against Feyenoord in the Cup. That's about it. You know? So, yeah. yes, there are pros and cons. But the situation of Schroeder and Heitinga are totally different. So, I can see them going for Heitinga. I'm not saying... I'm a fan. I'm, I do not say that I think it's the best option, but I think these are the things that I, they are taking into consideration. And a lot will have to do if they finish second or stay in third or maybe even drop to fourth place. Let me alter, let me alter uh, the points that you're making slightly and uh, give it back to you, uh, I Jess. Mm -hmm. um, you said it makes sense to a certain extent that there are no rumors because everything will be fixed after the last game, right? So do you also agree with the fact that there is no uh, clarity on the fact who's going to be yeah. the coach also yeah. towards Heitinga. Do you and think Heitinga really doesn't know what's coming after I'm 20? So, I'm telling you this. My feeling is more 75% that we go for another coach and 25% that we stay with Heitinga. And I will explain to you why. You can give some uh, more calmness and rest within the team to say that this coach will be the coach next season. It will boost the morale maybe a bit. The coach has a little bit more security. And it is something that probably brings positivity to the squad towards the end of the season. So it makes perfectly sense to announce that during the season if you made that decision already. But if you're going for another coach or you're looking abroad or you're looking at candidates, you're not going to say that during the season when you're still fighting for the second spot because it can bring down the morale and it can create havoc within the team. 
So if you look at it from a logical standpoint, if Heitinga would be the coach next season, it would make perfectly sense to already give that decision during this season. But they didn't. And why didn't they do that? Or they are not convinced about him. They want to see what his end position in the league will be. Or, big chance, they are talking with other candidates, keeping it under the radar, and will talk to the media and to the fans after the season. So for me, yeah. it's actually the opposite that the other panels are saying. My feeling is 75% maybe another coach, 25% at this moment Heitinga. But that percentage can flip if Heitinga secures the second place spot this weekend. So one game will make yeah, a big of course, man. It okay. makes a big case for him. Uh, stand in the uh, uh, be hiding half for a moment. If you're going in at the at the end of January, things are shitty. The team is in a worse state that 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 we've been in 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 decades. We're we're eight points behind the number one in fourth place. If he can tell the board or the the people that are you know responsible for hiring the next manager with Swen, for example, I secure the second place spot. We're Champions League. Uh, uh, we play Champions League next season. It's a great case that he can make for himself, especially not being able to have a preseason, not bringing any players in. He salvaged that with a team that has a with a, with a with a bad morale at that moment. So he can make a pretty good case for himself. Okay, I would say I would say though the only thing I would say I totally agree with you, but you can also look at at, at, at a different side. He was fifth when he took over, yeah, but we were still in fifth. yeah we were still in range to become first. And now, if you look at the standings, I think we're double digits behind Feyenoord. I know, and I agree. It's shit. But I've been saying it the whole season. The whole league has been poor. True. But it doesn't right. matter, man. Wait, 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 Feyenoord hear... has been champ is, is a champions now. They have the most, uh, the, the, the best coach in the league, in my opinion. You know, if he secures that second place spot, it's a job well done. It doesn't matter if he won the big games or not. I'm not saying that I'm confident that he is the right man for the job. I'm just saying... Mission accomplished. Understood. Understood. Oh. Okay, go ahead. Papi, you wanted to say something? And then Thomas can react as well. Yeah, I, I just read, like, the messages coming also on my Twitter. And then you read, Heitinga is already busy with things for next season. So when you hear things like that... And not only you're that... Not gonna leave every, you're not going to leave everything, your, the whole decision, based on the last game of the season. And not, only that, not, not uh, only that... Not only that. We tweeted also, like, a week ago, how much, how much weight... Do the players have also as a say into Hatiha? Because everything you're reading right now, all the players are happy with Hatiha. Yeah, are, happy? Club, are, are happy? Are yeah. happy? Are yeah. happy? But but let's be honest here. Like I said before, I'm not saying. Papi is saying it doesn't matter what happens in the last game. My feeling is Hatiha isn't in pole position. I'm saying if he secures that second place spot, things might things might turn around in his favor. So okay. it does have a lot to do what happens on the last day because my feeling is he's not in pole position anymore. And the securing that second place can make a strong case for him to be in pole position anymore and they cannot maybe surpass him if he secures second. That's what I'm saying. So don't get it wrong. Clear. That would be uh, terrible. Go ahead. I'm saying it's already decided. So I don't think that whole last match does anything. I think he's going to be the coach. So Okay. Thomas? Yeah, so first of all, uh, so uh, Ajax suggesting that uh, the fact that uh, we're not hearing any names and so on, you're suggesting that uh, Ajax is behaving in a very uh, professional manner. Uh, I guess we're not used to this uh, uh, recently, yeah? Uh, we're not used to the club doing things in a, in a right. We're, we're just screwing up everything um, lately. So I never, I never would have thought that... Uh, we're just doing a good job by, by not making things uh, public. But uh, sorry, but what thing. did what did I do with Ten Hag last season then? Please, sorry? please, uh, please touch upon and 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 give me the insight. What did I do with Ten Hag last season with the announcement about being oh, coach but, but of Manchester United? That's that's uh, that's. That's a different story, actually, uh, I guess, because uh, we knew uh, that we're going to find a uh, new manager. We we always knew that he's going to leave. Uh, I mean, Ten Hag. And uh, and actually, it's quite the opposite. It it, it means that uh, we weren't able to find a proper manager. Uh, no, but I'm on. saying you're saying the club is not doing things right, and uh, you will. You, no, no, you no. It, it, the club wasn't possibly. I don't know. But because the, but, last season, they last season they waited after the cup final 
when we, com we become champions to announce that Den Haag would go officially to Manchester United. And before that, they refrained from any official messages. Of course, there were rumors. So yeah. it's quite it's and, quite and similar. It's quite similar than this situation, but it's the other way around. It's now about the coaching position at Ajax and not the coach leaving. But they did quite a similar thing last season, if you remember correctly. But also, if you look at the Miss, Miss Nuttot, they were in contact since January with him. And look how long it took before uh, they announced Yeah, him. could be the so, way. Uh, you know, it, it, it takes a long time for these things to... to Materialize. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. exactly. It's not only that, we're gonna... the stock market also. And those things also influence those, you know, public messages. Statements. Well, anyways, so, yeah. anyways uh, going back to Heitinger and the last game being a uh, deciding factor or whatever. I really hope that's not the case because, uh, you know, being so much uh, result focused, yeah, let's hire Mourinho. Let's, let's screw the whole philosophy. Let's let's just, yeah, let's go that way. Uh, I, I, I very much, um, I, I'm not saying you're happy with that, Ajax. Don't get me wrong. Yeah, I, I, I guess your uh, that's your predictions on, on on what might be the thought process of the board, right? Mm -hmm. uh, I really hope it's not true. Uh, I really hope that the decision is already made uh, because. I firmly believe it should have been uh, made already, whatever the decision is. Uh, because, uh, you know, uh, it's just a single game. Uh, a, a lot of random things can happen. It's, it's, you, you need to judge the whole process. And uh, yeah, I think I won uh, uh, eight uh, games in a row after we lost uh, seven games. But you can make an argument that uh, his, uh, his idea to surprise uh, our opposition only can last for eight, uh, eight games. And after that, everyone knows what we're playing. And uh, yeah, he's only capable to, uh, to do fine for, for that shot. I guess you can make that argument, right? Uh, so also, I don't know, maybe uh, uh, we weren't uh, in a top, top uh, uh, physical moment. And he just squeezed the squad uh, like a like a lemon, right? Uh, for eight games, and after that, we're depleted, and uh, this is why uh, and a number of uh, lesser uh, results uh, came around. So yeah, um... I have a question, by the way, for you guys, uh, coming from Jerry. Uh, thank you for the question. What do you guys think that Hatcher's biggest con is to stay as a head coach, and can that be solved in a different way with a good assistant, maybe? Any any thoughts on that? Yeah, maybe. Uh, what he's doing, uh, I mean, what he's doing it, with the youth is pretty great. Introducing youth into the team. Yeah, uh, he's he's asking for cons. <laughs> for yeah, so he's oh, uh, yeah, okay. cons, not pros. Yeah, so he's seeing what is his what is his like um, things he has to develop, and can that be solved by having a good assistant next to him? Would that solve the issue for now? Uh, for me, um, seeing how he's um, behaving uh, at the bench, also at the Utrecht game, as a coach, you should, you know, have a certain class and uh, show a certain mentality towards the team. You did not see a lot of those things that he was like, oh, another miss. And, oh, you know, he was very disappointed all the time with his behavior against that Utrecht uh, game last Sunday. You didn't see that with Ten Hag a lot. He stayed more calm, you know. And I think to watch your team, you should always have a calm presence. Everything will be all right. You can see that he's still a bit a rookie in that area. Maybe still a little bit more too much of a player kind of mentality than a coach. And also for me, I like the way what Papi says, um, bringing in youth products. But he also doesn't make the rough decision like Schroeder did. Why isn't, besides him not being available, why isn't Concesao playing more? Why is he still playing a lot of players in that first 11 and not making cuts? We, we can all clearly see that it's sometimes necessary to play different players. He's also not making those rough decisions. This is something that worries me. And that is why uh, I earlier already opted in other streams for a type of Louis van Gaal. I'm, I know it's not realism and probably won't uh, happen because of his health situation and stuff. But that is a manager that can make tough decisions. And if you're going for somebody that is like experienced, it should be a coach with a with a great mentality, with a great vision, and somebody that makes rough decisions. And not seeing that with Heitinga still. Also, what I noticed with Heitinga as a con is he sometimes looks like he gets nervous. 
towards the end, you know, that uh, things are not going well. We saw that one match that he rotated the whole team around during the game. Which match was that? I don't know by memory anymore. Yeah, even the last game, he switched one player and that changed multiple positions on the yeah. game. So. Um, I don't remember which which game, but I know I know that he did that. You're right about that. And I don't but like also, that. But also, for me, for me, the most shocking thing, but again, it didn't influence the match uh, at the end, but I remember we played the PSV game and we were losing 3-0 and he brings Luca last yeah. five minutes or something. And I was like, what's the point? Why didn't you do that uh, uh, like 30 minutes earlier? Yeah. Probably. Yeah. yeah. So the funny, thing, the funny thing here is that uh, the first couple of games actually uh, uh, substitutions were, were, were his he strong crazy. fight. Actually, he yeah, was yeah. able to. Yeah. He was able. He was able to uh, to change the games in our favor, True. and some, somehow he lost that ability. So yeah. I don't know what's with that, uh, but this is the case. I would argue that uh, him not being calm and so on. I don't mind that. I mean. Yeah. Guardiola is very emotional as well, and he's the best manager in the world. So, I, I mean, and yeah, I mean, you, you might want a, a bit of class, and I know that Guardiola is a bit, a little bit more experienced, and so on. A uh, little, little bit more. Yeah, a, a tiny little bit. Yeah, but you could argue that um, this, uh, the way he's uh, he's reacting means that uh, he's uh, he's involved, he cares, and so on and so on. You could make that argument. I so mean, uh, it's our not previous. It's not an issue for you, basically. No, it's not an issue for me. I mean, uh, I'd rather have that than our previous manager, who shall not be named, uh, who, yeah, he 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 didn't seem to be too too bothered. He was happy with with us uh, uh, having uh, seven games with no loss. Ah, yeah, no no wins either, but hell, yeah. Look, I I see I see a lot of negativity around Johnny just because but I think a lot of people base their opinions based on what he showed in the uh, IX Youth uh, squad, right? So um, that's a different type of environment, I would say, because you're more focused on the youth development of players and less on just winning. Um, but also, like the changes he's making, is that because his team is not balanced, or is that because he's not seeing the game? properly like for instance a Bergwijn on 10 is that really his option or is this because he had he lacks options um uh, it's very hard to determine that but for me yeah. Bergwijn is not a 10 should not be happening but in an unbalanced team I'm, I'm sure he's just looking for options no that worked I, out against you he wants to play Tadic he wants to play Bergwijn is if he had some balls he would pass one of those it's quite simple Kudus is the best 10 we have play Kudus as a 10 play Concesao you need cojones for that to make the decision he's not doing it simple or as even that. bench Broby so we're not think, uh, talking about there's no balance you could create that balance as a coach play Kudus in the freaking 10 position play Concesaro on the right wing position and bring some depth into the squad and somebody that goes up to the defender and tries even after he fails and tries again and make us unpredictable. You're talking, you're He's not doing like that. Concesaro, you're talking like Concesaro is already there to be a starter, which I'm not agreeing with, first of all. And second, uh, Concesaro was injured last couple of games. So who else are you going to put on the right wing? He position? was, he was available. I tried to say. He was available a lot of games and he didn't play him. He didn't even give him minutes. So, yes, yeah, he, he's not been available all the time. 10. Sorry? The games that Bergwijn played 10, Konsa was not available for the option you're talking about. So That's true. That's would true. You, would injured. you have still played Kudus on the 10 and somebody else on the right wing? Then it Why would not? have had been Bergwijn or Tadic. You don't want that. No, I believe I believe Berg, Berghuis, but he was maybe injured... Also, right? Also, yeah. uh, not always yeah, available. Yeah, yeah. But Berghuis played a, a good match uh, a while back also on that right wing position. Not my favorite position for him. But also, you could look at it two ways. Or you look at it at the way, what is going to play at the right wing position? Or you think in strengths, what is the best stand that we have in our squad? And I want to play him on that position and we'll figure out what happens on the right wing. So you can think in disadvantage and a negativity okay but who's playing the right wing or you can think in positivity kudus would be a tremendous player on that 10 position i want him there no matter the case i fully agree with that way of thinking if the team was balanced but also when i think a player playing a 10 position means he's coming a lot in the box hijacks and when you're coming in the box you also need players in the sides that bring you that ball and give you that crisp passing and 
who's going to do that? We're not creating that many chances. Uh, what is Roy saying? If you want a player coming to the box, you, you need Klassen. But, uh, you know, yeah. you know, look, I'm listening, I'm listening to you guys talking, right? And um, I just go back. I think we mentioned this last week, if I'm not mistaken. When Hedeja was appointed, one of the first things he said is, I want to have um, the players, I want to go with a steady formation. I don't want to make a lot of changes. But now, in hindsight, if you look at what's happening, he's making a lot of changes. Some of them, of course, has to do with injuries, like Berghaz and Consal. But others, I do agree with Ajax. I think it has to do with the fact that he wants to play certain players, so he's shifting things around for that to happen. So, so we can we 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 yeah but, yeah, but wait a minute. What does that mean? It doesn't that mean, mean that. Yeah, go ahead. Sorry, sorry to interrupt, but that no. means that the player power within this squad is probably very high. Is that your conclusion? We should, we should not underestimate probably the influence and the power that Tadis has as an individual within this team and within this organization. And it's logical what he proved within the organization during the last five years. You have a certain status, and it's difficult as a coach to pass that up or to bench him because he's played everything. So you should have big cojones to do that. And also with Bergwijn uh, being 30 million, being your capital on the pitch, you know, they want probably maybe even from higher up. They want to play him because they otherwise burn the money that they invest in him if they bench him for a long time. So it's hard decision to make, and probably a lot of other arguments behind. Is that it a hard decision? So probably that is the player power within the team, and it's difficult for a new coach, especially a fresh one at Heitinga, to pass that up. But he's but, benching Bassi. Wait, wait. Am I because Roy also is saying that is a lot of power in the club? Does that mean that next season? He will not accept the bench role, and this is what we will see because that's not making me excited. The chance is bigger if Heidegger continues as a coach that he will continue on the same path with Tadic, probably. Maybe. So, all right. Okay. Um, guys, just two more things before we end the session. There, there are some questions coming in, but uh, I want to touch upon, we talked about it. Actually, I talked about it. Luca, also, um, I, I actually will not exercise the buying option, so he's on loan. You can buy him for 10 million for and you know for two years, I guess. Or no, no, for one we can get him for 10, 10 million. I'm sorry. But it's not happening. Do you guys agree? Do you guys understand that yes. we're not exercising this option? Yes. yes. Okay, all of you. Okay, Papi, so you can explain why. I have serious doubts just because he didn't get many chances, but the chances that he got, he did create a lot of havoc. And, and created chances for us to score goals. Um, yeah, yeah, I don't yeah, think exactly. I, yeah, yeah, yeah. In, in the box, right? He was creating a lot, winning a lot of um, headers, um, making it difficult on the defenders so that we could score. And he was important in some of these moments. So, um, and, and the other point is, where are you going to get... Look, maybe he's on the ball not really good. I, I don't watch every game from the Young Ajax squad. I have to apologize for that. I'm mostly focused on the first. You don't game. have to apologize. You don't have no, to no, no, but but when he came in at Ajax one as a striker, he was pretty dangerous, and that's what I'm saying. Like, where will you get a target man for 10 million somewhere else of of that that can do that? So no. that's the only point I have in which I'm like, okay, 10 million might sound steep, but will you find somebody that? It's creating that much havoc in the box. Yeah. Do we want else? to create yeah. havoc? Do we want yeah. to rely on chaos? There, there will you be. Do have. Ajax does need a plan B, and that's always been the case. We've always relied on plan A, but there's no is never a plan B for uh, um, for us to nick the win in the I, end. I, I can uh, tell you this. I can tell you this. Even I, with my posture, will create more havoc than 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 Luca does within the box. I must say. He did better, it's only stat-wise, don't get me wrong. Stat-wise, he did properly as a substitute. But this is such a poor player. And I'm sorry to it break is, it down it for is, you guys. Is. He, is a, he doesn't have the ball very well. If you look at Luke de Jong, for example, if they play a ball long towards him, he's fighting for every duel and, 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 and gets into the, um, you know, um, in, into the header. Luca doesn't know what he's doing most of the time with a long ball. Is it because of the bad long balls or is he just bad? He's not even convincing in the Keukenkampioen uh, division. 
he's he's by far not good enough for for Ajax, but it's it's amazing that he actually scored that many goals as a substitute mm-hmm. because everything else, his technique, the way he's playing, com- try to play his combination football, he's not getting into the headers when playing long balls. You know, the timing is bad. It's just a poor player. It's a yeah. very poor player in my yeah. opinion. And and uh, you can better take a Wout Weghorst, for example. I'm not saying that I'm the biggest fan. He will be more and a better pinch hitter than, for example, a Luca will be because Luca and 10 million for him is ridiculous. I wouldn't even mm-hmm. pay one million for him. If Wout Weghorst is better than Luca, let him go. Let him yeah, <laughs> much much better than Luca. Much much better, like five times better than Luca. We need a plan B. I agree, but I don't our plan B to be chaos. If, if you know, you know about talking about the plan B, right? Um, so. Broby used to be our plan B, and maybe it, Broby had Hassis Broby as a plan A and B at the same time, which is why maybe Luca doesn't have to play a lot in recent weeks, you know, because he's looking at the bench and he's like, he's like, you know, Bro- Broby is able now to play 90 minutes. I don't need to bring in another striker, and I think he can still do everything that Luca can do as well. Maybe not but there the are levels, levels not yeah, not the best header, of course, but Broby is known to force something. We always use them like that. Now he's our primary striker, but he's able to do both. Yeah, come on, guys. Yeah, is, but is this I, even I an argument? Another... Is this even Sorry, an argument? I do want another profile than Broby as a backup. I think he needs to compete for that position. No, but yeah, I'm but saying... not with Luca. Yeah. No, what I'm saying is no, even no, not specifically Hoch. with Luca. No. No, but what I'm saying is even with Den Haag, Den Haag would use Broby as somebody to force something towards the end. You know, so he has he can do that as well. Come on, guys. It, it, this isn't an argument. Luca is so far off from the standard that we need, even as a plan B, C, D, E, whatever you want for Ajax standards. Why are we discussing this? There, there are so many more players that are more suitable than Luca. He's just not it. I like the guy. He probably has a great personality. Never smiles, though. Thomas, maybe his family uh, of yours. No? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, no, he's not sufficient enough. We can have other targets that are way better from way less money than him. Just yeah, get, to even, even try to the get Goldberg, Goldberg back. But I think <laughs> I, I think we wanted also to say that you know a Zlatan type wouldn't be so bad as a, a target oh. man in this team. Oh, that's very oh, generous. Man. Did you just but, mention okay. like Luca and Zlatan in the same sentence? No, 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 no. I'm I'm off the Luca subject. We all okay, discuss cool. it. Oh, okay. It's not good enough. But I do want a plan B. I do want mm-hmm. a target man. I do want somebody that can hold. The okay, ball but hold on. You still think you still Broby. think that Wout Weghorst is worse than Luca is? I, 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 what did he score in Premier League? Nothing. So no, but come on, <laughs> come on. <laughs> Wout 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 that, uh, bro, Sometimes you crack me up so much. Seriously, he wow. He works hard, wow. but he didn't score much. No, so. but he scored against Argentina as a target man. Two goals kept us in the running until the penalty shootout in the semi-final of a World Cup. Did Luca do that? And then, and then he fought with Messi. So it's, I don't it's not care. Did Luca do that? Ah. Yeah, but uh, no. Papi, yeah. remember, remember, Vakros is playing as a ten uh, for Ten Hag for some yeah, reason. Yeah, yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> so, no, but they tried him also as a striker, but it didn't work out. Oh. Yeah. All right. Uh, I think this is the end, guys. Uh, <laughs> it was heated today. A lot of heated debates, but that's nice. Um, I would like. Can to we thank touch one I... point more? I'm sorry. Can we touch one more point? No. Uh, yes. Uh, yes. One more if point. It you, if it makes you smile, yes. And if you keep it, briefly, yeah, it's going briefly. to be a angry smile, but fine. <laughs> uh, yeah, because uh, there's been a lot of discussion that uh, we don't have enough quality, uh, that it's not, uh, it's not uh, Schroeder's fault that uh, the squad looks the way it does. Uh, Juan, you know what where I'm getting to. Uh, do you remember a certain uh, Lucas Ocampos? Uh, yeah, I, I guess I guess you do. Uh, you, you you've seen Sevilla uh, lately. Uh, he's been one of their most important players, uh, reaching the uh, Europa League uh, final. So he's a decent player after all, right? Uh, yeah, is he or is he not? He is. No, I'm reacting. What, I'm what, reacting what, what, to, what is the what is the what is the point? The the point yeah. is. Uh, the point is that uh, we have a, we have uh, we have a good enough squad to have achieved way more this season. It's not okay. a matter of qual- of the quality of the quality of our players, which has been brought up so many times. And I'm always like, you know, 
I'm, I'm already getting bold, but I, I want to, you know, make the, the whole process faster. So you're uh, using you're using Ocampus basically as a case, as an example. Yeah. To... Well, I, I I know I know I know that uh, it was a, like a special case because I don't know he didn't along with, get along with the whole squad. He wasn't up for it or whatever uh, his attitude, but. Uh, Mm, yeah, but it's yeah, yeah. He was a mismatch, but it shows that we, we, we I don't know, maybe uh, the whole squad is a one huge mismatch uh, because the quality is there. We have quality players. It's just a matter, I don't know, of the manager, of uh, of two managers, of not uh, being able to uh, to get the squad uh, mentally up for it. I don't know. Uh, I'm just I just wanted to say, yeah, <laughs> Shredder was the was the biggest mismatch. Uh, I don't like bringing up his name at all, actually. Uh, uh, like I've said okay, uh, a lot of times. We understand, we understand what you're saying. And if you look at Campos playing at Sevilla right now, although they play a little bit different, of course, mm -hmm. he's not that bad as what we thought he would. Uh, no, but basically. Let's so, be honest, Juan. Nobody said that they think they, that he's a bad player. I believe that he spoke the truth and that he was mistreated at Ajax. I believe yeah. it's a shame if, if things happened like he said it did. It's shameless from our side. Because that that's not a way to, you know, handle a player coming in. But this isn't even an argument for me. Sevilla and Ajax are so much apart, playing playing wise and playing style wise. Yeah. Why is this even a comparison? Because Sevilla knows his strength. He's been there for a long time before moving mm -hmm. to Ajax. He knows how the team plays. He already gelled in there. He's not a new kid coming in. He's been there for years. Sevilla's playing style is totally different from Ajax playing style. So it doesn't even surprise no, me. No, no, no. There is well a point there. here. There is a point here because uh, where, where I'm going to is uh, we misused him, right? We have proper quality players, no, no, no. but we cannot. We no, 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 we didn't misuse him. We, we didn't, didn't use him, him at all. Yeah. Yeah. So we used him for for not playing. Yeah. Whatever. You you know what I mean. Yeah, I, I, we, I totally disagree with we have enough quality. We have maybe enough quality. No, we don't have enough quality. System. We don't have enough quality for what uh, what our ambitions are because we never were good enough to, to I don't know, yeah. progress from the I, Champions I, I, League. I'm, or just, I'm just wondering, Thomas, maybe I'm not understanding what you're trying to say, but I'm missing still the point that you want to make because I, maybe I'm missing the content context that you want to bring no, in. But uh, what is exactly uh, the point that you want to make now? Because I, I do not the understand. The point I want to please. make, the point I want to make, is uh, the overall quality of our players is not the biggest, uh, I, I believe, is not the biggest issue we've had this season. Right? You're using, look, you're using Ocampos basically as an example. Yeah. But it also applies to other players. Yeah, we the opposite of a scapegoat, right? We have been very critical of players, although I have to say Ajax recently started the conversation saying it's not only a quality issue, it's only also a mental issue. But coming back to Thomas, Thomas, if I understand correctly what you're saying is we have been disastrous this season, but I feel with this squad, with this, with these players, this is not their level. We have underperformed. This is what you're yes. saying. Yes. Okay. Yes. 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 Okay. Sorry. Uh, the the whole negativity, like, uh, allow... oh, sorry, but, but hold on. Away I'm, my not, ability to, 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 I, I'm not yeah, waiting. This six, I want not, I'm not going to wait this six, seven more minutes before you made this point without you smiling at the end, bro. You promised something. He smiled. He smiled. Just smiled. Again, man, again, please. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll leave you, I'll smile, leave you with a positive smile. thing. Uh, yeah, it won't get any worse next season because it's impossible. Uh, that's one positive thing. And, uh, yeah, well, it's, we're, we're all going to die anyway, so it doesn't matter. Okay, we, <laughs> we, we, I'm sorry at the behalf of Thomas right. because uh, oh. it's getting very dark in here, but I think we should wrap it up because uh, this I'm is smiling. going to that's, that's probably That's probably what the viewers want to hear going into the Sunday game. Thank you, Thomas. We're all going to die, yes. Um, thank you so much, Papi. Thank you so much. Uh, our viewers, everybody watching, give us a like if you enjoyed the video. Uh, we'll be back Good on luck Sunday, 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 everyone. Game pop. Uh, I'm sorry? Good luck on Sunday, everyone. Yeah, good luck on Sunday, everyone. Fingers and crossed go. I'm wrong. Yeah, I really want to be wrong. I really do. <laughs> All right, guys. I'm going to finish now. Please don't talk. I'm finishing the video right now. No more finally, questions. Finally. No more finally. <laughs> 10 minutes over right, you, bro. Please. All right. See you guys. Uh, enjoy the weekend. And let's hope for the best result on Sunday. Bye, guys.